This is for the ethics review class at Parker University. One inexpensive way to start a chiropractic practice is to sublease or share an office with other chiropractors or other professionals. Uh, certainly it's inexpensive, but the risk of doing a sublease, if it's not clear that the businesses are separate businesses, you run the risk of making it look like a partnership. And one of the provisions in the Uniform Partnership Act says essentially, if you allow through your conduct to create the appearance of a partnership, you then have the liability of being partners. Now, the specific language is not important for purposes of this lecture, but just keep in mind that the appearance of a partnership, the appearance of it being one business, creates the liability of a partnership. Now that can be a problem with something like chiropractic. What happens if you're sharing office space with another chiropractor? The other chiropractor allows their malpractice insurance to lapse. If a patient gets injured, they may sue the other chiropractor, the, the person who committed the malpractice, but they may also look at other people in that office, other doctors in that office, and try to sue them as well. And unless those other doctors happen to have malpractice insurance to cover the delinquent uh, chiropractor, everybody become, winds up becoming personally liable. There's no insurance for that. So be careful about creating a partnership by accident or a partnership by appearance. Some good practices in a sublease or office sharing situation is to, number one, put some kind of agreement in writing. Make it clear as between the parties that these are separate businesses. They need to be run as separate businesses. They cannot hold themselves out as one business or represent that they're only one business. Uh, advertising should be separate for each business. And if there's any reason for one advertisement to be run for the office as a whole, it needs to be very clear that it's for separate businesses. Uh, the office should not use any kind of a firm or a business name. Each business should have its own separate identity. Uh, whenever possible, the telephones, each business should have its own telephone line, and each telephone line should be answered with that business's name. Should never be answered with a uh, business name like uh, uh, Smith & Jones. It's generic for all the practices. Uh, the signage for the, sign, for the office. As patients enter the office, they should see signs that clearly identify that these are individual, independent practices. As a practical matter, most of these situations, there's one entrance. But if it's possible to create separate entrances so that the patient walks in off the street or off the hallway, they go through one door to go into Dr. Jones' office and go through a different door to walk into Dr. Smith's office, then it creates less of an appearance that there's a uh, one business. Uh, credit cards and checks need to be payable to the specific business receiving that income. They should not be payable to some kind of a generic name. Credit cards can be a particular problem. Uh, businesses that are already in place may be set up to accept credit cards, but somebody who's just starting out in an office sharing arrangement may not yet be ready to set up or accept credit cards from patients. Sometimes it's an easy shortcut to uh, uh, run the credit card on somebody else's account. And that creates a pretty clear appearance that there's one business and not separate businesses uh, because of the way it shows up on the credit card bill. Uh, the letterhead should be different for each business within the office sharing space. Uh, insurance billing needs to be handled individually. Uh, even though one practice may be more advanced or more set up in handling insurance billing, it's a mistake to use that practice or to send all the bills out as though they were owed to that practice. Uh, each practice needs to have its own uh, system in place. Now, they may share the uh, administrative personnel, but the bills going out to the insurance companies need to identify the specific individual practice and not just a group of the doctors together. Uh, the doctors and the staff need to be care careful how they discuss and characterize the relationship. Sometimes it's easy to, re to refer to somebody you're working with as your partner or co-owner. If you do that, that can cause a, an appearance again that there's a partnership. And there are actually some cases out there where the, the 
uh, business people referred to each other as partners, and that was enough to create a partnership. Seeing each other's patients can become difficult. Um, certainly, it's a, it's a convenience. It allows the doctors to take breaks or go on vacation. But when they're seeing each other's patients, it needs to be clear to the patient by the way they, they pay their bill and by the way they, their credit card bill is run that they are going to see a different doctor, a different practice. Um, if you allow that to overlap, if you don't, if you allow it to appear that there's one office, you create a partnership liability, and that creates a, a very, to me, unacceptable risk to the doctors in the practice in that office sharing arrangement. So be careful about office sharing arrangements and make sure it's clear that these are separate businesses.